Hello everyone. In order to conduct environmental impact assessment, there are 10 steps of operation practices that need to be followed. After a project is proposed, screening process will be conducted before an assessment takes place. Screening must be done whether activities required an environmental impact assessment or not. This step determines whether or not environmental impact assessment is required for a particular project. Level of assessment is also determined in this step. So far, there are 19 activities requires environmental impact assessment. Screening is important for identification of potential significant adverse environmental effects. Usually, this step is carried out secondly after the initial activities, because it requires expert opinion. However, for cost saving and budget purposes, this step can be done with available expert in-house. For the screening outcomes, a particular project is either required full or comprehensive environmental impact assessment, limited environmental impact assessment, or not required environmental impact assessment at all. Step 2 is the initial activities. The elements required in initial activities are identifying related decision-making bodies, identifying related laws and regulation, preparing a report preparation schedule, identifying the experts required, election of main coordinator, which is the environmental impact assessment team leader, and distributing the work among the expert team members with the expected dateline of completion. All environmental impact assessment requires a good initial activity planning and effort of field-specific experts. Step 3, Scoping. There are two elements required in this step. Firstly, identification of project possible alternatives and impacts. Secondly, discussions between the developer or relevant agency and authority such as Department of Environment, change of specific land space and other alternatives can be employed at this stage. Step 4 is the Baseline Studies. Baseline studies is one of the most important parts of environmental impact assessment procedure. This step is about assembly of relevant information on the current status of a project area. All information of existing environmental condition are gathered, which are about the physical characteristics, hydrology and water quality, air and meteorology, noise, geology and soil, socioeconomics, habitat and species, infrastructure and facilities, and also utilities and services. Anticipation of the future environmental condition after the project is also considered. It is important to do comparison after the project when carried out for monitoring purposes. Step 5 is about the impact prediction. This step is important to forecast environmental impacts using prediction models and mathematical equation. This step is the most scientific part in environmental impact assessment. It requires the elected expert output. The mere prediction models and mathematical equations for specific environmental impacts are as follow. For soil, they usually using the universal soil loss equation. For solid and hazardous waste, they are using the crude waste estimation equation. Air dispersion models are usually used for air quality. For traffic impact, traffic generation and flow models are used. Cost-benefit analysis is normally used for socioeconomic, for water quality, biochemical oxygen demand estimation model is used. For noise impact, traffic and industry model are used, and for flood, urban drainage design standard procedure is referred. The impact assessment is in step 6. This step evaluating the significance of impact to the environment. For this assessment, it usually determined by assessment method, professional judgment, and reference to regulatory bodies. Impact assessment can be done by using various methods such as network method, matrix method, diagram method, overlay method, GIS method, stimulations method, ad hoc method and checklist method. The checklist methods are widely used in Malaysia due to Department of Environmental Requirement and the guidelines. Step 7 is about the mitigation. This step is very important because the identified negative impacts are alleviated. The steps that are usually employed in practice is avoid, reduce, remedy, compensate and enhance. The step-by-step -step mitigation measures are usually employed to eliminate, reduce and compensate all the identified significant impacts. The details of mitigation measures adopted are very important to be carried out without negligence to avoid any future problem. This step is also significant as to recognize unexpected impacts and remedial action to be taken. 
It also verify the impact arises whether it is same with the prepared report. Next up is the report preparation. Environmental Impact Report is usually submitted to the regulatory bodies such as Department of Environment for Decision Making, Review and Project Approval. This report is also called as Environmental Impact Statement or Environmental Impact Assessment. The necessary chapters required in Preliminary Environmental Impact Statement under the EQA 1987 and Chapter 5 Environmental Impact Assessment Guidelines are Executive Summary, Project Title, Project Initiator, Statement of Need, Project Description, Project Option, Existing Environment Description, Significant Impact, Mitigation and Abatement, Residual Impacts, Summary and Conclusion, List of References and lastly, Data Sources or Appendix. Step 9 is about Decision Making. Environmental Impact Statement is sent to decision makers for further action that comprise the local regulatory bodies team of environmental impact statement consultant, and the local public members which are appointed by Department of Environment. Report must contain various alternatives that enable the decision maker to choose one of them. The decision maker may require further investigation on certain aspects to gain public confidence. After this process, the construction of the project can be started if approved with or without extra condition. Lastly, Step 10, which is the monitoring or execution of environmental management plan. This is the final stage whereby the project has already started and various environmental management plan contractors are already appointed for ongoing monitoring at site. This step is usually critical because the permission for construction is already granted, and it is the project proponent duty to ensure all mitigation measure recorded in environmental impact statement is well conducted, to avoid the project to stop by the Department of Environment or due to public complaints. An environmental management plan must at least contain the following items. All environmental management plan contactors and consultant must follow Department of Environmental EMP Reference Handbook. Till the next video. Thank you for watching.